Well, we've been telling you about Texas troops working around the clock this Christmas weekend as nearly 17,000 migrants tried crossing the border. But this picture of a rickety boat named with God's blessing bringing 15 Cuban refugees to Florida on Christmas morning proves the crisis at the border is a problem facing every state. Florida GOP Congressman Carlos Jimenez sits on the House Homeland Security Committee. He joins us now. Congressman, thank you for joining us. And as we showed with that boat. You got 15 Cubans coming uh, to the Keys, but this is not an isolated case. It happens every day. You see it here. What is your reaction uh, to where things stand with regards to the border? Well, no, not only do we have a, a crisis at the border, the southern border, but uh, we've seen a fourfold increase in uh, in crossings uh, from Cuba, from Haiti, you know, into the into Florida, especially the Florida Keys. And so um, you know, conditions are just, you know, really bad on the island. Uh, it's an oppressive government. Uh, most Cubans nowadays, though, are trying to get through the southern border. It takes about $20,000 to get from Cuba th uh, to Nicaragua and then up through Mexico and then finally in into the southern border. So that's what's really happening. But still, many of them are still trying to cross, you know, through the straits. And Congressman, as Republicans uh, come into power in the majority uh, in the new year, what do you hope to do about the border? What, what can you do? Well, I think we, have, we need to have hearings on why, why it is that the Secretary of Mallorca's Department of uh, Homeland Security refuses, really, to uh, secure our southern border. Uh, it's a, not only a, a problem with the millions of migrants that are coming in illegally into the United States, but also it leaves the border unprotected. And so we see fentanyl flowing through at record pace. Uh, and we know that fentanyl is responsible for the deaths of tens of thousands of Americans every single year. So it's an absolute failure of the Biden administration in protecting American and protecting American lives. And also talking about other things that Republicans may be doing in the House in the new year, all of these revelations about Twitter, Intel ties, raising questions about big tech, other sites as House GOP, uh, James Comer, your colleague, the incoming chairman of the Oversight Committee, will begin to have these hearings. And in the, in the part nine of the Twitter files that you may have seen dropped pretty much on Christmas Eve, we learned that there's a foreign intelligence task force across multiple government agencies, not just the FBI, also CIA, the, the National Defense Intelligence Group, not looking at foreign intelligence, but rather at domestic folks in encouraging censorship there. What stands out to you? What do you uh, want to get to most when the hearings begin? Well, look, it, it's uh, it's no surprise. I mean, uh, look, I was mayor of Miami-Dade and, and uh, in charge of the uh, one of the largest uh, police agencies uh, in the United States, Miami-Dade Police Department. We did surveillance on, on Twitter and social media all the time to, to take a look at gang activity and all that, but we never tried to suppress anything. And so censorship, that's the problem. You know, you can look at at things uh, and, uh, from a surveillance standpoint, yeah, because it's uh, it's all it's all public. But when you try to start censoring people and you try to start censoring, you know, ideas, etc., and then you start putting out false narratives, like the FBI saying that they needed to censor the Hunter Biden story because it was false information, them knowing very well that it wasn't because they had the laptop. That's a problem. It's a, to me, it's a violation of the First Amendment, freedom of speech. Government should not be involved in trying to censor people and censor ideas. That's very problematic. That needs to be investigated, and we need to get to the bottom of it. Hey, Congressman, 10 seconds left. There's talk, with Florida being the fastest growing one, should Elon Musk move to the Sunshine State? Absolutely. You know, I've asked Elon Musk to move to uh, uh, Florida and Miami-Dade in particular. We have freedom of thought. We, it's a great uh, state. Uh, it's a great free state of Florida, and, <laughs> and you know, we got thousands of people coming down here every single day. Uh, why? Because it's just a great state to live yep. in. Sunshine and beaches. Congressman Carlos Jimenez, thank you very much for taking time.